This video is brought to you by Honey, the free browser extension that saves you money. Also a good spread. So there's been a lot of discussion around possible balance issues on the Western servers recently, and the two groups at the center of debate, the baby boomers and the millennials, are quick to blame the other side for the problems they're experiencing. The baby boomers, all high-level players, will tell you the millennials are ungrateful for the expansions that were built for them and don't know what it's really like to grind for XP, while the millennials, who are all high enough level to watch porn without getting banned but new school enough to be able to text with their thumbs, will tell you the baby boomers were playing with lower difficulty and purposely patched the game in their favor to the detriment of new players. As a millennial player myself, I wanted to take an objective look at the advantages and disadvantages of each generation and see what balance updates could be implemented to improve the game. So of course we have to start with the tutorial levels 1 through 18, and it looks to me like the advantage goes to the millennials because during the tutorial as a baby boomer, if you don't do what the mods tell you to do, you take damage. If you don't do what your hosts tell you to do, you take damage. Basically, if you fail an objective, you take damage from anything ranging from a flip-flop to a wooden spoon all the way to a leather belt until you get it right. But as a low-level millennial, helicopter hosts make sure you're safe, and everyone gets a reward even if they fail a quest. So while both groups end up emotionally crippled in the long run, millennials don't look like it on the outside. With that said, millennials didn't get to grow up with as many similar level players in the same clan, so many of them didn't get to develop their social skill trees effectively, but they did have better survivability because of the overprotective hosts. As an example, in my playthrough, my host would always panic and mass text me if I was home late or wasn't back from school yet, but back in earlier expansions, if a host took their six players to the park and only five showed up when it was time to leave, that's just one less subscription to pay for. In sum, I definitely say the early game favors millennials, especially if you're playing as anything other than the Caucasian race, because back in the Baby Boomer expansion, most of the game's features weren't available if you played anything else, and even if you were a Caucasian male, you couldn't even play co-op with another dude. But either way, both groups of players are well past the tutorial, so we need to talk about the mid-game. So a big downside for millennials in the mid-game is their education as in they need one. And if you want a good profession, then you're pretty much forced to buy the college or university DLC, which takes at least four years to download. And that wasn't bad enough, then they get you with the $200 textbook microtransactions. On the other hand, for baby boomers, after you finish the tutorial levels, you would either immediately go into a well-paying profession for the rest of your game time, or you got to playtest the Vietnam map pack. Also usually for the rest of your game time. Now, if we look at the meta during the mid-game, while Baby Boomers had the opportunity to play through one of the most economically prosperous periods of the Western servers, Millennials have access to a ton more cool features, like birth control and memes. A lot of overlap there, but you get the idea. Along the same vein, finding a co-op companion is much easier in recent updates where, for Millennials, if you're desperate enough, it's as easy as downloading an app banging out a selfie in your bathroom, and in half an hour you might just find someone who'd settle. In contrast, baby boomers had to physically be in the same room to play co-op, which is clearly an outdated game mechanic that won't be coming back. Another difficulty for millennial players is that while the game has way more features than ever before, the monthly fees are higher than ever. In fact, it's not uncommon for groups of two to four millennials to party up in order to pay for their subscription, which leads me to believe that baby boomer players had a marginal advantage going into the end game. But with that said, as time goes on, we reach a point of speculation because by definition there aren't enough high-level millennials to know what their end game will look like. And at the current rate that expansions and DLC are being added to the game, we might see things like the level cap getting drastically raised in the future, scripts being implemented to reduce the amount of time players need to spend grinding for XP or dollars, and possibly even new maps opening up for us to explore. On the other hand, there's also a chance that the global warming bug causes water levels to gradually rise as areas become too hot to inhabit, forcing us into smaller and smaller pockets of land as we're gradually eliminated by super-intelligent AI via Battle Royale. In contrast, the Baby Boomer late game is much more consistent and predictable. And despite a plethora of content being added to the game in the last 10 years, most of these players have only just now latched onto Netflix, and just some of them have learned how to text albeit with the stylings of a stranded sailor whose last dying breath was OK Google. And so, at this stage we have to ask ourselves, what kind of balance updates could we implement that would make the game more fair? Some players have talked about a buff to the minimum amount of dollars you can earn for an hour of your game time, allowing millennial players to afford their subscriptions more easily before they're replaced by bots. Other players have suggested increasing the subscription fee for well-equipped high-level players, and using some of those dollars to pay for lower-level players' DLC. And some players just want weed. 
It's a complicated situation, so like all balanced discussions, we need players to voice their opinions, and I think the best way to do that is by continuing to share personal anecdotes on anonymous online forums with other unrated players, and looking for ways to make our playthrough just a bit more manageable. So if you are interested in lessening your struggle, I recommend trying out our sponsor, Honey, which I've used for a few years myself. It's a free browser extension you can run whenever you go to a website's checkout page where it automatically tests coupon codes it's found for you at no cost. As an example, let's pretend I'm shopping online for pizza. Strange way to describe the process, but either way, I say to myself, how about I try Domino's? That seems like a place that would have online coupon codes because I just checked. So I go there and put in my order, six Hawaiian pizzas, extra, extra pineapple, no ham, just the usual. And when we go to the checkout, we can run Honey, click Apply Coupons, and right away I get $33 off. Admittedly, that might be out of pity, but it was still incredibly easy. So while even though that exercise was redundant because I've memorized every coupon code to all local pizza places, Honey does pop up to give you discounts on everything from shoes to computer equipment to whatever it can find. So it never hurts to have it sit there in the background. If you want to give it a go, it's completely free, and you can go to joinhoney.com slash casually explained, click add honey, then click add extension, and you're done in literally 10 seconds. That's joinhoney.com slash casually explained, and the whole thing is free, so give it a go. Thank you.